Right guys, thanks for watching. Well, uh, Supermoon is nearly upon us. I'm doing this on uh, the 8th of February, Saturday the 8th, uh, here in UK. And uh, the full moon comes in 11.33pm on this Saturday uh, on the west side of the States and Canada. East side, it's going to be 2.33am here in UK, 7.33am tomorrow, Sunday the 9th. In any case, it's nearly here. Those are just the fine details. And in any case, it's going to be a powerful one because it happens uh, bang on 20 degrees in uh, Leo. So it's going to be noticed, you know. It's a Leo full moon. It's all about... Uh, being noticed and that's the effect it's going to have on, on uh, many of us if not all of us but it's certainly going to be noticed a lot in itself now some say that it's a supermoon and some say that it isn't so uh, what's the case there i'll put links to these websites i'm going to look through some websites and uh, find out what the wisdom is about this uh, for myself and i hope you guys will do a bit of research too because it's interesting stuff um, now there, there's no official rule as to how close or how far away the moon has to be to actually be called a super moon or a micro moon and those are the two extremes um, the moon goes between apogee and perigee apogee you could say the letter a stands for away to help you remember it. it's when the moon is furthest away on the apogee and uh, if we get the moon on perigee that's when it's closest to the earth and if we get a full moon on the perigee then we tend to call that a super moon if we get it on the apogee we call it a micro moon uh, that is the true explanation but exactly how far away these things have got to be is another matter and um, i use the website timeanddate.com a lot to get the uh, the current moon phase let's have a look at that it's 98.8 percent uh, full now and there's still nearly a day to go before it actually comes to full uh, the process progress slows down because it's like not just an egg-shaped transit it's the sort of apple version of it as well you know it kind of um it starts off close to the moon then it gets close to the earth and then it gets further and further away um so it grows a lot in the sky when it's further away because it appears to be moving more and then when we get close to the full moon it slows down or when we get close to a new moon as well same thing happens um so you know the question is is this a super moon and uh, that's what we've got to think. Now, time and date says that a full or new moon that occurs when the centre of the moon is less than 360,000 kilometres, that is 223,694 miles away from the centre of the Earth, uh, that is going to be a super moon. That's what time and date says, and I guess they'd know. A uh, micro moon is much, much further away. But, uh, you know, the main effect in terms of astrology of a full moon is how much we can see it in the sky because the energy of it is all about um, the sunlight reflecting off the moon and coming back to us from some place in the world where the sun is actually out. Um, so it's all sunlight and uh, the reason in the tarot that the moon can stand for false information and uh, you know, if, if we ever get the moon as a tarot card in a reading we've got to be careful and we've got to get some advice really uh, usually then from somewhere from outside ourselves to be really sure. Um, that's really what it's about you know how much does it actually affect us and that you know very much to do with how much we can see it in the sky. But there we are, you know, that really is going to depend on the exact local conditions where you are. If we've got a very cloudy sky um, in the UK, when I look out the window tonight to look at it, um, the question is going to be, can, can I actually see the moon itself or is the sky just going to be lit up blue? It'll be lit up blue in any case and it'll be difficult to sleep. They always get that one in. They always make it difficult to sleep somehow when there's a full moon. But uh, whether we can see it or not has a lot to do with how much it actually affects us. Um, there are four, essentially four super moons this year, some say. Some say there are only two. But uh, the people who say four say this is the first one, February the 9th, 2020, and then March the 9th, 2020 as well and April the 8th, 2020, and May the 7th, 2020. So they're loaded into the first half of the year. Uh, other people say that it's just the uh, March the 9th one and the April the 8th one. And uh, it really is, um, it's, it's a moot point, and I guess it depends how you feel about it more than anything else. Um, essentially, a, a new or full moon, another definition of this, uh, is 
when it comes at or near 90% of its closest approach to Earth in a given orbit. So it's pretty close, whichever way we look at it. Um, but, you know, that, that phase is actually quite an ambiguous thing, really. Uh, this full moon, as I was saying, 225,234 miles. So it's kind of, it's not quite a thousand miles out on terms of, in terms of the official definition. And that's why some people are saying it isn't the real deal. Uh, on the other hand, the one in March and the one in April, well, the March one, 222,000 miles, so that's well within the 90%. And uh, in the April one's going to be 221,000 miles away, so that is kind of well within as well. The May one, which is also controversial, that's going to be 224,429 miles, so that's only just missing. And I think it might be a little bit of a mistake if we're going to say that that kind of distance really matters because it's a blinking long way away, whichever way you look at it. Uh, they say it's a snow moon. Different cultures give different names to the moon, but to the Native Americans, I believe, and I'm sure they really had a strong handle on it, would call this the snow moon. So... Uh, Will it snow? That's another question, you know, because the climate is always changing. And uh, that is another part of exactly how the moon affects us. It's going to be affected by the climate because it is all part of the stratosphere. It's all part of the ecosystem that we live in. Um, but generally speaking, um, you know, the snow moon is what it's all about. More than anything, though, I think we need to just come back to good old-fashioned astrology and say that, uh, you know, the fact that it's going to be in 20 degrees of Leo and it's going to be very close to the Earth is going to make a huge difference. Other things that are going on is that we're coming up close to Mercury retrograde. That is going to affect it big style as well. Mercury actually entered Pisces, so actually, yep, yeah, um, is about to enter Pisces, thinking about it. It's not quite in there yet. Uh, but that's going to happen February the 8th, 2020, so just before the supermoon. Now, that has really got to have an effect uh, in a big way on, not just on the future, but on the way we see the future, because uh, Mercury's going to be in 7 degrees Pisces and 46 minutes, and it's going to be trying the true node, the north node. So it's all going to be about where we're heading. The north node really is about the future. The south node really is about the past. So that is going to be a big factor and uh, then Mercury actually moves um, further into Pisces and turns to semi-square Pluto yeah, which uh, Pluto's in Capricorn so things are going to feel very very grounded with Mercury and Mercury is a massive influence um, it's just about our nearest neighbour so there's Mercury on one side and Venus on the other side there are two nearest neighbours so Mercury having a big effect on it on February the 10th Venus in Aries is going to conjunct Chiron the wounded healer so uh, matters around love and relationships are going to be sticky to say the least but um it's going to be worth working on those things at that time because the lunar energy is so strong. So that's really what matters about this full moon that's coming up. Whether we call it a super moon or not is another matter. Um, and I guess you've got to decide for yourself. If you like things absolutely precisely exact, then, you know, it's not quite on that 90% mark of, um, of its full size. So... You know, is that really a supermoon? Well, it's going to feel like one anyway, because it's not that much difference when you start talking about 225 or 224,000 miles away. It's too far to walk, you know, my car's not going to make it there. Um, in fact, you know, it, it took several days to uh, get a rocket to the moon from Earth. So is it that much difference or not? Only you know and only you can decide. And that really is uh, what it's about. You've got to make your own mind up about these things. But uh, it's, it's a strong one. It's uh, happening in Leo. Um, and so for that reason, it's going to be noticed. It really has to be. Um, you may feel kind of drawn to be uh, to want to be the centre of attention. It really depends on Leo and you and where you stand with your birth chart and Leo and everything. Those are the things that really matter about it. Um, certainly, if you've got a project that you need to get noticed, even if you're not a sort of notice me, notice me kind of person, then it's going to be a good time to do it. But... Um, other than that, the question of whether it's a super moon or not, it's really quite a big question, but I'm not convinced it matters all that much, to be quite honest. Um, 
you know, if, if any sort of orbit of the moon can be taken to mean that, that it's the one that's going on at the moment, which frankly it is, I mean, that's not difficult to work out, then, you know, this full moon comes to within 95.5% of its closest approach to Earth of the, the actual perigee. Um, and that, that's all relative to uh, the most recent apogee and what, whatever the next perigee is going to be. But... You know, as far as I'm concerned, guys, it's all over by the shouting because what really matters is the effect that it's going to have and it's going to be having that effect mightily soon. OK, I'm going to leave that there. Thanks very much for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed this one, please. Um, leave me a comment. It's always great to share the journey and uh, I'll be back again before you know it with more readings. Give me a subscribe. Tap the bell so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment. It's always good to share the journey. And if you guys can share me around social media a bit, I would be super appreciative of that. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic full moon. You know, that's, the, that's what you've really got to focus on. Make the most of it. Have a fantastic full moon. Get out there. Have a life and I'll see you again very soon. Peace.